The 55th Annual Grammy Awards will be handed out in Los Angeles this weekend, and you know some local folks might just walk away with one. Joyce DiDonato, the Kansas City Symphony, the Kansas City Chorale, and Pat Metheny all have nominations. But this next story is about someone who never won one, and except for the true aficionados, has largely been forgotten. Gene Clark was a founding member of the Birds and so beloved that a symposium about him and his music drew fans from across the country in 2014. Here's a look back at a piece that first aired on Arts Upload two years ago. He was born in Tipton, Missouri. His family moved to Kansas City. He was a baby and grew up here, he went to Raytown High, and then graduated from Bonner Springs High. So he was an important part of Kansas City's music history. You know, Gene, he heard the Beatles, and uh, that kind of changed his mind about wanting to stay just in the folk vein. It was folk music back in 1963, which first whisked Gene away from Kansas City. Seems several members of the new Christie Minstrels, remember them, were in town performing at Starlight Theater, saw Gene's group, the Surfriders, playing at a club on the landing, and pretty much offered him a job on the spot. Just a year later, Gene Clark's storybook tale took another amazing turn. He met Roger McGuinn at the Troubadour in Hollywood after he left Christian Minstrel. And David Crosby ambled over and started singing some third part harmonies. And before he knew it, the birds were born. By the time Gene was 21 years old, he had a number one hit. Only uh, about a year before that, he was out driving a tractor in the field. So it was kind of, you know, phew, you know, skyrocket to the moon kind of thing. Well, I've been running around, trying to prove I was in love. But the man who took us eight miles high couldn't maintain the orbit for long. Just two years later, ironically in part due to a fear of flying, Gene left the group to embark on a series of solo projects and musical partnerships with some of the best folk, rock, and country players around. A 25-year musical odyssey detailed in a documentary called The Bird Who Flew Alone. And I laughed as the Joker said, lead on. And all along, he continued to make music admired by his peers but largely ignored by the record buying public. There's a train leaves here this morning. I don't know what I might be on. In 1991, burdened by problems with drugs and alcohol, Gene Clark died at the age of only 46. Have you seen the change in rivers? Now they wait their turn to die. There's a handful of his songs that people just go crazy over. And once they hear those, they want to go a little bit deeper. And they get a little bit deeper into the catalog, and they find another handful that they like just as well. And then they'll go a little bit deeper. And at that point, you're stuck. You know, it's like the La Brea Tar Pits. Have you seen, have you seen the silver raven? She has wings and she can fly. Cell phone. Thank you. Though it's mostly symbolic, the no cell phone rule to prohibit bootlegging is in effect here at the Phillips Hotel, just three days after what would have been Gene Clark's 70th birthday. Like the first one three years earlier, this symposium has drawn participants from near and far. The kind of writers, fans, and collectors who just can't get enough of the music Gene Clark made. Some of them come from original tape reels from 1966 that Gene actually made as five demo songs. You said I love you, wish you were here. Gene Clark, in my opinion, will be seen in history as the greatest combination singer-songwriter who's ever lived. To me, he's up there with Neil Young and Bob Dylan and at, at that level. But people, you know, Gene who? He had a great voice, he had great lyrics, incredible music. 
just ethereal music, almost like, like a Mozart or Puccini. I'm a musician myself, so I tend to hear the chord changes, and I'm, one of the songs they just played, I'm, I'm sitting there going, okay, that's C, E minor, and then all of a sudden it's like, what the heck was that? David Crosby said Gene Clark didn't know the rules for writing music, so he just wrote it however he wanted it to sound. What a prolific songwriter he was. It never stopped. To the day he died, he was still producing music. I'm fascinated by his creativity. You know, there's only a certain percentage of all that stuff that he wrote that ever made it to being released records. And I want to hear it all. <laughs> deep discussions about deep cuts dominate the proceedings. But there's also time for symposium goers to get out and see some of the places that helped shape Gene Clark's art. Like this railroad trestle near the family's home at the edge of Swope Park. He later wrote a song called Kansas City Southern. Or the venerable old Dairy Dine, where Bonner Springs teens like Gene spent lots of their leisure time. And of course, 100 miles to the east, his first home and final resting place. This year, Tipton, Missouri and Los Angeles also held Gene Clark tribute concerts. There was just something about Gene that you know, people were drawn to, and not only in terms of his musical talent and his songwriting ability, but just you know him as a person. You know, despite you know whatever demons he might have had and uh, things he struggled with, he was still people still loved Gene a, a lot. I here set my hand to be caused to be affixed this great seal that proclaims November 17th to be Gene Clark Day in Missouri. <laughs> hear R.E.M. and what they did in Athens, Georgia, you know, or the early 90s country sound in Nashville. You know, it's a big Birds influence, so, you know, a big Gene Clark influence, you know, all over. Those songs in, have endured, you know, some of them for, for 50 years, and I think they'll continue to endure. And I'll probably see 